name's Roy Glenn. I'm 27 years old. Born and raised in uh, Oxnard, California. I'm a uh, power lifter. Been doing this for about competitively for two years. I've actually been bodybuilding for about three, but recently I've switched over to powerlifting because I was always one of those skinny kids uh, growing up, so I was never really big or strong. But uh, I remember what a coach told me one time, you know, Roy, if we had half of the guys here that had your heart, shoot, we'd be the strongest people ever. I mean, um, whole thing is that I, like I said, I was real skinny. I got into bodybuilding for a long time. I started doing well at that. I started getting myself into lifting and everything went well. But I kept on getting top five every time. I started winning all the time and you know I was getting it bigger. So I took some time off. A buddy of mine says, hey, you should do a powerlifting. It's local, you should do it. And I kept on telling him, no, it's not what I'm into. You know, the guys that do it are gonna get fat. And I was just totally against it. And then finally, he bugged me so much, I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. So I did it, started getting ready for it. And sure enough, uh, I have to put into, you know, the registration. So I go over there to a place called KO Gym, and uh, that's where I train now. And uh, meet my trainer, my future trainer, Larry Paula. I look at this guy, he's the biggest dude I've ever seen in my life. And I uh, shook his hand, put him in registration form. He said, uh, have you ever done powerlifting before? And I said, no, I've never tried this in my life. And he asked, hey, well, how much do you squat? And I said, uh, I do like 500, something like that. He said, well, how much do you weigh? I said, about 180. I will never forget what he said. Well, come train with me Saturday and we'll see what you got. I was like, whoa. That day, because I went full throttle, I'll show him everything I got. We changed everything as far as technique, how to do everything in two weeks. And that was my first meet and I won first place. I broke about 10 records in the APF division and won 81. Um, I was hooked. I got hooked. I was raised by two parents, uh, my mom and my dad. Uh, my mom was Mexican, full Mexican, uh, born and raised in Oxnard. My dad is uh, Irish, he's white. Um, born and raised in Oxnard as well. So, not really the athletic background, but the thing is, my mom was 100% support, supportive of everything I did, no matter what it was. So, T ball, soccer, she was always there, cheering loudly. Come on! It's just one of those things she was always there, loud. My father, however, was one of those who never satisfied. He was always on me. He was never happy about anything I did. He was always criticizing. I can take criticism. Part of what's repetitive, 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 just beating down, basically beating a dead horse. It literally was one of those things that really kind of broke into me. You know? And uh, it wasn't until later down the road that I realized that we didn't have a strong relationship. Um, I realized that me and my mother had a stronger relationship. I didn't realize why. Um, it was extremely abusive, um, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, not gonna say I'm a mama's boy, but well, while he was beaten and doing whatever he was, my mom was always there telling me it's okay, things are gonna get better. She was always on that positive side, things are gonna get better. And that's what I transitioned to life. No matter how bad your situation is, no matter what it is, there's always a positive outcome that can happen. It may not seem that way, but it'll happen. And that's what instilled in me. And eventually, you know, um, after, you know, XYZ, basically he cheated and, you know, hit her and they divorced, they separated. Uh, it wasn't until I was a man that they did that, around 21, 22. And uh, I stayed with my mom, helped her out through that hard time, and she supported me through bodybuilding and powerlifting. Um, so every powerlifting meet, she's there cheering me on. And the uh, thing is, I'd like to instill on anybody that no matter how big of a hard time you're going through, 
there's always going to be a positive outlook. Um, the way I grew up in Oxnard, there's a lot of gang affiliation, there's a lot of um, homicides, there's a lot of negative things going around in that city. And the thing is, it's very easy to get caught up in you know, working a regular 9 to 5 or you know, people telling you're not good enough or you're not smart enough, or you're not fast enough. And keep that into your mental thing that, you know what, that's, that's how it is and you settle for that. Um, but through all that, through all that pain and suffering that I went through as a kid all the way to an adult, I kept hearing this voice, it's going to get better, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. And that voice literally was my mother. She kept on saying, one day is going to be your day. One day is going to be your day. Just wait. And sure enough, um, it's, it's happening. And I still can't believe that it's happening. Um, I fell in love with the sport, and I I can't be more appreciative of what's going on right now. Um, I like to say to anyone that's feeling like this, that is in this position where they're in a negative situation, don't give up. That's the last thing you want to do is give up. Um, you give up on that. You give up on life. You're not dead yet, so keep fighting. Now, with the gym, I got involved with this gym, per se, because it wasn't like everybody else's gym. I got into this gym because it's a place where everybody literally is on the same page and same level. The atmosphere literally brings you in where you, you feel like you have to work harder. As soon as I opened that door at KO Gym in downtown Ventura, Oxnard, I mean, Literally, a kid coming from Oxnard, coming to Ventura, I thought, you know, I can, I would never find something like this, you know. As soon as I walked into those doors in downtown Ventura and opened up and I saw Larry and he opened his doors to me, I felt like I needed to work harder. It's true what they say, an environment can change a person. I literally worked harder in this gym. I've sweated more in this gym. I even bled more in this gym. And Larry Pollock has got to be one of the best trainers, best coaches, best mentors, and even friend that I've ever met. Anybody who's ever talked to him could say the same thing. He's been doing this for 30 plus years, and it shows. And I will keep acknowledging him to this day because he literally took what was missing in my life, and that was a positive male role model. And he'll never know this to this day, but I really appreciate him every day for what he did. And uh, hey, if you're willing to actually try a different gym and see what this place is all about, come down here, Ventura, California. You'll see it right there in Oak and Main. It's right on Low Hill. It may not look like much, but once you walk into this place, it changes you. It changed me, uh, it changed my life, and it turned to be the best decision I've ever made. I've only competed in about maybe mm, seven, seven meets, and um, there's three of them that mean the most to me. Uh, the first one has got to be my first one uh, that was given to me, uh, and uh, I won first place in my first meet ever. So this is the one, that, I mean, it may not look like much to most, you know, a little ribbon and has a little pile of the plate, but this one meant a lot to me. Uh, because the first time I worked hard for something and a positive outcome came out. And I take this with me everywhere I go, every meet I go, because it gives me some kind of luck or some kind of grounding that, hey, this is where you started. Don't let it get to your head. So uh, it's got to be my favorite. Second one has to be my first pro meet, and that was one that. It's still surreal to me because I literally remember 2015, Larry Bollock well, literally told me when we were at the expo, checking everything out, first time me going, he says, you know, oh, there's powerlifting meets over here. I looked over there, I was like, wow, they actually have powerlifting meets here? I looked at that stage and I was just like, I want to be there. He literally took one glass to me and says, give me one year. I'll get you here. 
And uh, sure enough, one year later, uh, it's still still real to me today. I get invited by the director of the USBA, Steve Dennison, and says, Roy Glenn, you are ranked number seven. You're invited to the American Cup Invitational Pro at the LA Fix. And the thing is, I just came back from a lo my first loss at Worlds, was a big competition. So I came at the end for once. So I had a lot to prove. It was my first meet of 2016. I had a lot to prove. I was so mad at myself for losing, but I came back. I had fun with this one. It was the first time I had fun with any meet. It wasn't worried about winning or losing or records or no record. It didn't matter. What mattered was I wanted to redeem myself and say, hey, I finished the meet. I did well. Larry trained with me really day and night and I won against a pro that's been doing this longer than I have. It was only my first year completing it. And I carry this one really dear to my heart because it's my first pro one that I actually won. Now, on to the last and final one. This one, uh, still trying to hit me right now because I just, I just won this one. I had a lot going on through this meet. My mom just lost her job as a nurse and she's still trying to fight with the union. Me and my girlfriend went through ups and downs. My grandfather was getting really sick. Uh, I really worked hard for this one. A lot of people saw it. I worked really hard. And I thought it couldn't get any worse, but it turns out that my coach, uh, Larry Pollock, actually got sick. He got pneumonia, really bad pneumonia, and some other stuff that they had to check out. He couldn't make it to Vegas with me. So literally, I was going into the biggest competition so far with my rock, my, 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 my coach, not there. But he told me everything was gonna be all right. It was gonna work out. Stick to the plan. So I stuck to the plan. Thankfully, I had my grandmother, my mother, and my girlfriend by my side to, you know, support me and be there with me. I was still. I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I felt scared. I was scared because this is the first time I'm going to meet without my coach. I got to Vegas. And the biggest welcome from every powerlifter I've known shocked me. We're talking guys I've met on folks' social media, Instagram, uh, Casey Mitchell, um, Dan and Stephanie Steffens, um, Steve Dennis. Everybody literally said, good luck. We've been waiting to watch you lift. And I would literally gave my all. There's nothing I could have left on that platform. I went eight for nine for the first time. I broke my previous total and I came back home. <laughs> I went against 60 guys in the nation that were top ranked and I won. Me, a kid from, like I said, a kid from Oxnard, a kid that no one even believed in. And I came back home with this one. This one means a lot to me because I worked so hard for this one. There was a lot of tears, there was a lot of blood, there was a lot going on this one. And I came back home satisfied because I worked hard. It was the definition of hard work does pay off. And it was really the key point anybody says in any sport. Just when things are going wrong, doesn't mean you give up. So this one literally in my trophy case will literally be shown everywhere. So just because things don't go the right way doesn't mean you have to give up.